Okay. Encroachments. In your book on three, an encroachment is simply an improvement that extends over the property line. Simple as that. It's some structure that we built that goes over the property line. Big problem. It makes both properties, it can make both properties unmarketable. This is why we do surveys. Yes, surveys tell us where the property lines are, and so we know how much land we have and all those sorts of things, but the main reason we do surveys is to look for encroachments because these are big, big problems in real estate. Okay? Is that all you need to know about an encroachment? All right, it's time for some math. Who's ready for it? Who got the calculator? Got a calculator. Something that looks like this? I have one of those. I'll, I'll bring okay. it. I forgot. You're f and it's fine. I'm here to use your. I'm sorry. It does make the calculator just like that. Yes, I know it does, but you can't use that on the exam. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So this, you need to go ahead and get yourself one of these so you get used to using it. That's, that's, it's fine to use your cell phone for now, but you can't use that on the exam. Right. Okay. So make sure you get yourself a calculator to use so that you're accustomed to it. You're used to using it. Um, they're not that expensive. North Carolina property taxation is governed by something called the Machinery Act. The Machinery Act is the law that gives your local county and city the right to tax your property on a yearly basis. Okay? We use what's called an ad valorem tax. That means based on value. Our property taxes are based on the assessed market value of the property. That term assessed market value is important. Not just market value. Market value is a different thing. Market value is what a house or property might sell for. Assessed market value is an estimate of that that the county comes up with. So you're going to be taxed based on this estimate of value that the county comes up with. Right? Pretty much all real property is subject to these taxes except properties are exempted. Um, some uh, nonprofits may own property, for example, and don't pay um, the ad valorem taxes. You need to know how often these properties are reassessed. Remember, I said you're going to be taxed based on some assessed value. They can be reassessed every eight years. We call that the octennial reappraisal. The octennial reappraisal is the process by which each county goes out every eight years, visits every property in the county, and comes up with a new value for that property. And yes, they physically visit every property in the county. How often? Every, every eight years. So your valuation on your property is going to last for how long? Eight years. Eight years. That's why you have to be careful not to focus on market value. Because is the market value of your property going to stay the same over eight years? No. No. But the assessed market value will. This assessment is going to last for eight years. It is possible for them to change the assessed value halfway through the cycle. At year four, if they want to, they can change the value. But here's the difference. In the octennial reappraisal, they actually visit every single property. And they come up with an individual value for every single property. If they want to change the value midstream at the fourth year, they can, but they have to do it countywide, and every property has to be adjusted up or down by the same percentage. So whereas at the octennial reappraisal, they actually visit individual properties and decide this is the value of this property, this is the value of this property. If they want to do this horizontal adjustment at the fourth year, then every property in the county would go up by 3% or 
every property in the county would go down by 2%, and it would be an across-the-board adjustment. They wouldn't actually visit the properties. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand the assessment process? What law gives them the authority to tax you? Machinery Act. Machinery Act. I know it's a hard one to remember because it has no relationship to taxation, but it is the Machinery Act. Is that what's called in other states too, or do they have a different version? Yeah, every state has a different version. The North Carolina version is called the North Carolina Machinery Act. And the, the eight years is something North Carolina do? That is North Carolina specific as well. Different states have some very different approaches to taxation. We're going to actually talk about one other additional approach to taxation um, called mill rates that some other states use. Because um, you may see that on the national part of the licensing exam. But North Carolina uses a, a, a by value method, which is most popular. Most states use that some form of an ad valorem tax. Okay? Again, here are your dates, and again, the important ones, the ones you need to memorize. January 1st, the lien attaches. September 1st, the bills go out, and they are delinquent in January 6th of the following year. Those are the important dates. This is called a T-bar. It is going to be your best friend. If you don't use it, I will beat you with my shoe. I don't care how good you are at algebra. I don't want you to be solving formulas algebraically if I can help it. I get it. I used to be that person. I was that stubborn jerk who sat in a pre-license class and said I didn't take all these years of algebra and calculus to need a, a toy to tell me how to manipulate a formula. Here's the thing though, folks. The toy works. And it works well. And you don't have to solve formulas if you use it. If you absolutely insist on solving formulas using algebra, that's fine. Keep in mind, I will not teach it that way. I will teach it using the T-bar. Okay? How many of you have ever used a T-bar before? Just show of hands if you've ever seen one. Okay? A lot of people have not. A T-bar is nothing in the world but a trick to help you know how to manipulate a formula. Believe it or not, that thing that's up there on the screen is the formula for doing the math of calculating property tax bills. T-bars always look like a big T. We usually put them in a circle, just make it look a little prettier. You don't have to use the circle. But they always look like that. And they always have three components in them. And here's how you read the T-bar. When things are beside each other, you multiply them. Earth shattering, right? Tough. When things are top and bottom, you divide. It's as simple as that. And so solving that thing becomes a simple matter of pointing to the thing you want to find out and the other two things you know what to do with them. So if I want to know the assessed value of a property, what two things do I need to have? The tax bill in dollars and the what? And the rate. And what am I going to do with it? I want to know the value. I want this thing. What am I going to do? Divide by the tax bill. Divide by rate. If I want to know the property tax rate, what am I going to do? If I want to know this one. Tax bill divided by value. If I want to know the dollar tax bill, what am I going to do? Multiply rate times value. Now, I want you to write it down a little differently than it is on my slide here. You'll understand why in just a second. If you've already written it down, trust me, it's not that much of a change. When you write it in your notes and you memorize it, the tax bill, of course, stays on the top. 
put the assessed value on the left side and the rate on the right instead of the way it is on the slide here. Put the assessed value on the left side and the rate on the right. Doesn't change the formula. It's just a better way to memorize it. Here's the reason why. Those of you that use the percent button on your calculator, you need to put the rate in second. Calculators don't like you pressing that percent button before you do something with it. So it's just an easier way to memorize it. Does everybody got that? If I want another rate, what do I do? Tax bill divided by value. Tax bill divided by value. Want another value? Tax bill divided by rate. Want another tax bill? Value times. Value times rate. Simple as that. Now you know how to manipulate the formula. So all you have to do is figure out what they're asking you for first. And that's the key to doing the math in this class. You can't answer the math questions in this class by picking up a calculator as soon as you see a number. It, I promise. You can't just start firing numbers in a calculator and expect a magic wand to happen. It's not going to work. You have to read through the question and figure out first, what are they asking me for here? You know? What is it they're trying to... Sometimes maybe even jump down to the last sentence first and just say, see what it says, you know? And if the last sentence says, you know, what is the property tax rate? Well, gosh, here's the formula. I'm looking for that thing. So I know I've got to find first the tax bill and second the assessed value because that's the only way I can get to the rate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You have to create a game plan for yourself when you do the math in this class. Now... That doesn't, make, that doesn't seem apparent when we start doing this. This math is fairly simple, the property tax math. But it gets rapidly more complex, especially when we get to acreage math. You've got to start creating a road map for yourself. That's number one. Number two, what is the first thing your math teacher in middle school told you to do when you turned in work to him or her? Show your work. Please, show your work. Because the first thing you're going to do is go... I don't understand. And I'm going to walk over there and I'm going to look. And this is what I'm going to see on your piece of paper. And you're going to say, I don't understand. You know what I'm going to say? I don't either. I don't, either. I don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're trying to do. I have no earthly idea. Can anybody figure out what you're trying to do from that? I can't help you if you do that. It's not that I want you to spend a whole bunch of time showing work. It's that I can't help you. I can't figure out where you're lost if I can't see where you're getting lost. So please do me the favor, at least initially, of showing your work longhand so that I can see at least they, they know they had to take tax bill and divide it by assessed value and they tried to figure out what the tax bill was and they tried to figure out what the assessed value they were on the right track here because if I see that I'm like okay I don't know yeah you're just lost <laughs> I can't help can't, and I want to help so show your work on it alright so T-bar this is not the only T-bar you'll get we'll use the T-bar a lot here's the, the nice thing though the T-bar itself never changes the, the, the words in here will change, but it's always going to be two things on the bottom, and you multiply them, and one thing on top that you use in division. Always. Always. The, the one thing I will point out here is this rate that comes out, and, it, and whenever you calculate the rate, it's going to be given to you as a decimal. Okay? Whenever you do this math, and you calculate a rate in this class, it's not going to be, your, your calculator does not pop up and say 38%. What does 38% look like on a calculator? 0 .0. Not 0 .038. 0 .038. That's 38%. Somebody said that. What, what percent is that? This one's, 30, this one's 38 percent. What's this one? 3.8 percent. You always move the decimal two places to the right. When you calculate the when you calculate the rate, whatever number comes out of that calculator, just go two places. 
that's the only trick, if there is one. Okay? And that's just understanding how to read the calculator. Now, if you're punching the rate in, feel free to hit the percent button. You don't have to move the decimal when you're punching the rate in. You know, if you're punching in an assessed value of $200,000 and a rate of 2%, feel free to punch in 200,000 times 2%. That's what the percent button is there for. You don't have to move the decimal in. But if you're calculating the rate itself, you're going to have to move the decimal. Everybody with me so far? Good. Good. All right. So let's look at an example here. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I give you an example. Rates in North Carolina are expressed as dollars per hundred. And I am firmly convinced that this is just to screw with you. Because it is the most complex way of saying a percentage that you can possibly imagine on earth. The tax rate is $1.57 per 100. Here's how you write that down. dollar and fifty seven cents per one hundred. You know what I want you to see when you see that? It's complicated. Watch. That was hard, wasn't it? Can you deal with it like that? That's what you have to do. You drop off all that dollars per hundred nonsense and put a percent sign behind it. Because a dollar fifty-seven per one hundred, folks, is one point five seven percent, and that you can deal with, right? I hope. Okay. So we're going to use it as percentage. It's going to be stated as dollars per hundred in North Carolina. Just drop that off, put a percent sign behind it, and you'll be good to go. Okay? Here's an example. What is the yearly tax bill for a property with an assessed value of $220,000 that's located in Chapel Hill where the tax rate is $1.76 per 100? So in this one, what are they asking us to find here? Tax bill, tax bill right? They want us to find that. So, tax bill equals what? Assessed value. Assessed value times rate. Right? Did they tell us the assessed value? <laughs> yes, sir, did. Easy. $220,000. Did they give us the rate? How did they give us the rate? Dollar seventy six per one hundred. What are we gonna write down here? One point seven six percent. One point seven six percent. Two hundred twenty thousand dollars times one point six seven and hit the percent button. If you're gonna use a percent button, that's how you use it. Seven six. Sorry. Type than 1.67. But that's what you said. Oh, did I say 6.7? Yeah. $220,000 times dollar seventy six. I must have typed it in dollar seventy six first on that same answer. What'd y'all get? 38,000. 3872. That is the annual tax bill. And that's an accurate example. That is the tax rate for Chapel Hill. I know how that compares to Wake County. It's higher. Much higher. That's the highest tax rate in the state right there, just FYI. North Carolina, they range anywhere from about 60 cents per 100 to $1.76 per 100. It's always going to be right around 1% in most places. Okay? That's a very simple one. Here's another example. What's the total tax rate for a property with an assessed value of $275,000 and a yearly tax bill of $2,350? In this case, what are they asking us for? 
They're asking us to calculate the rate. So, we want this one. What's the formula for rate? L divided by assessed value, right? What's the bill? Twenty-three fifty. Divided by an assessed value of two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. And if you do that math, you come up with point zero zero eight five four five. And I said when you're calculating a rate, what do you always have to do? Move times 100 or move the decimal two places to the right. Correct? Or multiply by 100. Same thing. So what we get is 0.8545 or 85 cents per 100. See, I can add that right back on at the end. 0.8545% or 85 cents per 100. Does everybody see that? Pretty simple thus far. I'm sorry? I said yes, thus far. Thus far, right. Now, here's an example where they give you two different rates. It says, what's the total assessed value of a property located in Raleigh where the Wake County tax rate is 75 cents per 100 and the City of Raleigh rate is 28 cents per 100 if the total tax bill is 3180? If you live in Raleigh, which tax are you going to pay? The Wake County tax or the Raleigh tax? You're going to pay both of them. You're going to pay both of them. So the best thing to do with a question like this is just to add the two tax rates together to get a total rate. And that's what we've got right here. We just added 75 cents plus 28 cents. It's $1.03 per 100. Drop off the per 100 stuff and put a percent sign there, 1.03%. That's our total tax rate. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. And the question was, What's the total assessed value? Well, if we want the value, what are we going to do? Divide. Divide tax bill divided by rate, correct? So the tax bill is 3180 divided by the total rate of 1.03%. That gives us an assessed value of $308,000, $308,737 and change. All right, before we talk about mill rates, let's see how you do with this. This is not a quiz. This is just a, let's see how you do it. I want you to work on numbers one through four for right now. I'm gonna walk around One through four? One through four, please. 